Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope your day's going well. I'm in Luminar 4 and uh, I thought I'd do a video about managing light in a photo and that's because when I start to edit a photo, there's really three things that I think about. The first one is how do I balance the light out so that it's kind of a, a fairly even distribution, assuming that's what I want to do. There are photos when I want a higher contrast, um, in which case I wouldn't do everything that I'm going to talk about here. But these are some tricks and hopefully some tips that will help you in terms of managing the light or balancing the light out in your photos. Um, the other two things I think about after light are detail and color, and I'll go into separate videos about each of those. Um, in managing light, I, um, I generally use, there's four different filters or tools in Luminar 4 that I like to use. And then there's one kind of wild card, so I thought I would talk about those. Here's an image that I shot here in Austin. Uh, I've got some blown out highlights here in this sign and this one, and then I've got some shadow over here. There is a spot up here, totally see that. Um, and I can take that out later if you want to know how to use the eraser tool. I've got a video about that. Uh, but let's just jump into that. The first tool is light, right, which is essentially a replacement for the raw develop tool that was in uh, previous versions of Luminar. So here's the thing I think about when I'm managing the light is you've got a histogram up here and it, it basically represents the distribution of light in the photo. So the further all these uh, like graphs are to the left, the darker the photo is, and the further they are to the right, the brighter the photo is. So to show you that as an example, I'll take the exposure slider and if I drag it far to the left, Obviously, the photo gets really dark, and you can see the histogram is heavily skewed to the left. And the opposite is true as well. If I drag it all the way to the right, or pretty far to the right, you'll see I start to get a really heavy distribution um, of light, or the, the graphs in the histogram really air to the right-hand side. And of course, the photo is, you know, uh, yeah, way too bright. Um, so that's a visual guide to help you in managing the light if you're trying to get an even distribution. A lot of people like to have a histogram kind of um, you know, well distributed in terms of the center of the photo. It just depends on what you're trying to do with the image, but it's a useful guide. There's also another component of the histogram I'm going to point out, which there's these two little triangles in the upper corners. So if you just click on those, there's the upper left one, which represents shadows. And as soon as I click it, you can see I get some of these uh, blue markers in my photo. And then this one in the upper right, that one represents the highlights. Uh, and it shows you in red here, the highlight area. So what this does for you is uh, the red stuff basically shows you where things are blown out, where it's basically pure white. And the blue stuff shows you where it's really, really dark, basically black, right? And so it's a great visual cue to help you in your editing. So that's where I come in and I'll use the highlights and shadows sliders. Um, I don't really use the exposure slider because if you go like this, um, it's a global slider. So you can see that my shadows, the blue areas, are disappearing, which is great, but the areas that are highlighted in red are increasing, and that's because expo exposure is a global slider. It's affecting, uh, you know, the entire image or all, all the different parts of it. And the converse uh, or the opposite is true. If I go to the left, sure, all the red stuff disappears. It looks great, Jim, but um, the uh, the blue stuff is is crazy everywhere, right? So um, I generally don't use exposure unless the entire photo is really dark. I'll use highlights and shadows. So I might come in here with shadows, lift those up a little bit, which you know helps me balance the light. You can see the blue stuff is gone. And then the highlights, I might take these down. In this case, I'm gonna go negative 100. And you can see that my red has uh, disappeared quite a bit. So there's the before photo and there's the after just using highlights and shadows. So they're very powerful and, and um, you know well worth um, spending time using. Now you can always turn these off by clicking them again and then you can see under them. And so if you look at this sign here, you can see I've got a bit better visibility. There it was before and there it is after. You can kind of make it out, but truthfully, it's still just kind of too bright. And um, that's where you might need to go, go do some custom masking with uh, some other tools or maybe just lower the exposure by um, well, in this case, for lowering the exposure, you'd have to add a new layer and then use a light tool again and then mask in the exposure because I've already got adjustments here and you cannot mask the light tool on the base layer. Um, but having said that, I still think the photo is much more balanced and looks a lot better. Now, here's the thing I'm not gonna cover in this video and that is under advanced settings, you do have whites and blacks and maybe moving the whites may help a little bit with that sign and that one, which are still a little bit blown out. Um, and it could help with the, the blacks as well, which I don't really need to do here, but 
There is the tone curve. I'm not gonna cover the tone curve here simply because I think that deserves a video all of its own. I'll do that in a future video. Super powerful, very good tool to kind of sort of come to grips with, but I won't be covering it here simply because I think it would take a while. So we'll cover that in another one. Um, I'm gonna hit reset. And now I'm gonna go over to the next uh, filter or tool that I like to use for managing the light. And that's an AI Enhance, and it's just AI Accent. It's a very powerful slider. If you go like that, you can see that it's doing a great job there of bringing up the dark parts without blowing out the highlights. Very intelligent in that way. However, it doesn't do anything to help me with the highlights. And so that's where you may wanna come back and use a combination of these. So in this case, I would come back and take highlights down to get better visibility into that sign and reduce the glare there while also using AI um, accent to, uh, to brighten the dark parts, if you will. So AI accent works kind of like smart tone worked, but they're not the same. There are some differences, but um, that's a very handy tool as well to help you manage the light. Okay, just reset that. Now I'm gonna pop over to Pro and go into Adjustable Gradient. One of my favorite uh, tools that was in previous versions of Luminar and I continue to love it. Uh, but it basically allows you to separate the top from the bottom and to define what is top and what is bottom and then adjust, uh, make adjustments there. So I'm gonna say set orientation. I'm gonna rotate this a little bit and just to kind of line it up with the roof line here. And then I'm gonna move that into position like that. And so now I've kind of got the top of the photo, which is anything above this center line, and the bottom, which is anything below it. Again, not a deep dive and adjustable gradient, but um, I've now separated top from bottom. So for the top of the photo, which is basically the sky, um, I want to bring the exposure down a little bit. And for the bottom of the photo, I'll click on bottom, I want to bring the exposure up. And so you can see I've now, let me show you the before and after, before and after. I've now got a better looking photo. Again, the highlights are still kind of blown out here. So once again, I would probably go back to essentials, get into light and take highlights down just a little bit further control the look of that sign. Not a major difference, but it's something to uh, sort of keep, uh, keep in mind. Now also keep in mind that what I just did in the light tool is global in nature. So um, if you don't want to do that, I'll go back here and hit reset. Um, that was global highlights, right? But within the, the bottom or the top of this, I also have highlights and shadows. So I could come over here and just say highlights down. And you can see that that's reducing it. It's also reducing the sky a little bit, but it's helping me reduce the sign. So what I really recommend is experiment with it in adjustable gradient if you're using that, but also maybe go back and try the light tool and try the highlights there to see how it works for you in terms of managing highlights or shadows, that sort of thing. But that's one of the great things about adjustable gradient and why I think it's a wonderful tool for managing light is you can separate top and bottom and make edits that are different in each section of the photo. Um, you can also see you have warmth and vibrance. So I might on the top make it a little cooler and a little more vibrant just to up that blue a little bit simply because I like it. And then in bottom, I think I might would actually cool it off a little bit as well uh, simply because for me, the yellow of these lights, it really kind of takes over the bottom of the photo and I just don't like that a whole lot. Um, and then I might would add some contrast down there on the bottom, maybe bump up the shadows a little bit. But again, very powerful tool, wonderful for adjusting the light. Let me show you the before. There it is before adjustable gradient and there's the after. Much better job of managing the light, but as you can see, it also helps you with colors and things like that as well. So it's kind of a combination power tool, if you will. Uh, but does a great job with helping manage the light. All right, I'm gonna hit reset and get out of that. And the next one is over here. Oh, here it is, uh, dodge and burn. Uh, now, this one is very simple and straightforward. It basically allows you to paint in a brighter or darker adjustment to the photo. So I might click start painting and lighten, and I'm gonna right bracket key to make my brush a little bit bigger. You can see my strength is at 50, and I'm just gonna come over here and just paint in a little light adjustment along the sidewalk and the street. Um, and I'm not gonna get over here in the fence and the side of the building, because I don't really care if they're lighter. I'm more interested in uh, this porch here. Uh, this was shot like at sunrise, so there's really no one there, even though it's a brew pub. Um, and then the nice thing about this is you can just click darken, and on the same um, uh, instance of the tool, in other words, you don't have to go add a layer and get the tool again. You can come over here and just paint darken. Maybe I wanna darken that sign Again, the highlights are still blown out, so that's, again, 
or the power of these adjustments it comes from using multiple tools. Um, so I might lower that. Maybe I lower the exposure here as well. I don't know if that looks very good. Um, and then you might want to go into the sky as well. I think I would lower the strength, uh, maybe something like 20. And that's something I recommend doing is um, if you are going to do dodge and burn, start with a fairly low strength just because you want to see how it looks. And I'm just kind of hacking this paint job here, but um, there it is, dodge and burn across the sky and the foreground, different settings for lighten and darken on the same instance of the tool. And let me show you the before. There it is before and after. There it is after. Much better control of the light. And again, one of the reasons I think dodge and burn is a wonderful tool to have. Okay, I'm gonna hit reset there. And my wildcard filter is just kind of fun. It's over here on creative and it's called glow. And there's a particular setting and that is soft focus bright. And basically, let me just show you what it does. You just drag the amount and you can see that anything that's kind of bright gets brighter, but also kind of, uh, well, it says soft focus. I think it's almost like adding fog. It's not exactly that, but it does brighten it and it, soften it softens it up, but it gives it a nice little glow. And so depending on what you've done in other areas, so let's say I went over here and I took the highlights down and I bumped up the shadows just to kind of balance the light. Maybe I want to come over here now to glow. And let me let me show you what that would be. There's the photo before glow, which you know looks fine with the highlight and shadow adjustment I just did in the light tool. But then you add glow, it gives it a nice little romantic kind of oomph. I don't know what you call it, but um, I like to do that. You have a brightness slider, so you can increase or decrease that. Um, and then you've got some advanced settings here as well for smoothness and warmth. I think I might take the warmth down overall, but um, really that's kind of a wild card filter. I just like to use it. I just think the soft focus brights uh, setting because there are three in the glow tool. You can see the other two there, but I like soft focus bright, kind of a wild card. That's a nice little pop of light. There's the before. And there's the after. I just like it for this kind of photo. Again, a wild card. Um, lots of different options in Luminar 4, but those are the primary tools, which would be light, AI enhance, or AI accent within the AI enhance tool, um, adjustable gradient, and dodge and burn. Those are the four that I primarily use to manage and adjust the light. And glow is, uh, or soft focus bright in the glow tool is kind of my wild card. And then also don't forget, keep in mind what we talked about up here with the histogram and using these indicator lights by clicking those triangles to help you know where you need to manage the light and by how much. And that's it for light. I'll be back soon covering detail and then I'll also cover color. And I've got some other things I'm working on as well. So thank you for watching. Do subscribe if you haven't yet. And don't forget to hit the, uh, the bell for notifications if you do subscribe so you'll know when I get a new video um, posted. And other than that, Feel free to leave me a comment, and uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate it very much. Have a great day. I'll see you soon, my friends. Take care, and adios.